Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we have what apparently might be the best killer Sudoku of all time uh, to have a go at. This is a puzzle called Hinges by Jovial, and it's already been recommended to us, well, loads of times, and some of the emails we've had have been eulogising about this. Apparently it's quite extraordinary. Um, at first glance, it's very hard to see um, what's going on, but, uh, you know, you can see there's some there's some six cages and 24 cages. I mean, it looks it looks approachable, so I'm quite excited to have a go at this, especially after uh, the enormous video from yesterday, the, the Christmas movie that I ended up making, which was, I think, an hour and 40 minutes long. I'm so sorry if you um, if you got cross with me about that, but um, reading the comments yesterday, I was, I was relieved um, to see that some of you thought I hadn't been quite as daft as I feared I might have been. Um, anyway, what do I have to tell you today? Well, I should start by saying that, of course, Cracking the Cryptic is going to be with you over the holiday period. Um, so Mark and I are committing to make videos, um, uh, yeah, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Boxing Day. So don't worry. If you have annoying relatives and you're just going to need some quiet time on your own, we will be there to join you. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention today is down there in Melbourne, Michael, uh, Michael, your housemate and best friend Theo got in touch with us um, to say that you've been surviving the various lockdowns you've had down in Oz um, by, well, using a strict diet of cracking the cryptic, uh, which we were, well, very, very pleased to hear. Um, and I think that your birthday plans have been ruined by COVID as COVID seems to ruin so much in our lives. Um, and Theo suggested it might make a small difference if I said happy birthday to you. So Michael, I hope you have a brilliant day down there. Melbourne is one of my favorite places on earth. I do have relatives down in Mount Eliza. Um, so I'll say actually, I'll say hello to Uncle John, Auntie Ginny, Miranda and Louisa. If you're, if you're watching, happy Christmas to you all. And yeah, happy birthday to Michael. Um, now, the only other thing I think I've got to mention, uh, I'm just checking my, oh no, I've got two things, two other things I need to mention. There is a, a contest coming up on Logic Masters India uh, that some of you might enjoy. It's a Tapper contest. So Tapper is one of the logic puzzles that you'll find. Uh, it's like a pencil uh, pencil puzzle. Um, and in fact, I think I covered it in one of the recent videos on pencil puzzles. Well, there is a, t a tapper contest starting on Christmas Day, no less, and it's a completely computerized contest, which is somewhat of a departure and I think a very sensible innovation. Um, and I think Prasanna Sashadri, the brilliant constructor and solver from from India is behind this. Um, so if you go and register on Logic Masters India, I will try and remember to put a link under this video. And then I think the contest is gonna run over several days. So you'll get a puzzle a day for about 15 or 16 days in a row. Uh, it sounds a lot of fun. And knowing the quality of the constructors, if you've got if you've got any love of pencil puzzles, you will enjoy that. So I recommend it to you. Um, now, the only other thing to say, of course, is to mention the Pyramid Puzzle Hunt, which uh, actually, hang on, there we go, I found the thumbnail. Um, now, you know, this is our Christmas gift to those of you who are patrons of the channel over on Patreon. The feedback we've been getting has been, well, off the charts and with good reason. This is just a quite extraordinary puzzle experience. Do have a go at it. I promise you, you will enjoy it. Basically, it's like um, some of you may remember the old text adventures where you, <laughs> you found yourself in a location and you would type in go north and it's a bit like that. You have to navigate your way through the pyramid. You find new puzzles on your journey and you have to figure out what's going on. And there are Sudokus, there's pencil puzzles, there's all sorts of things. It is a magnificent creation from Peter Venus, uh, from Aspartacus and from Panthera. And uh, two of you, two more of you have managed to make your way through the whole thing. So very well done to Kappa Teki, I hope I'm saying that properly, and RJ Powers. Um, right, and that's that's that for that. Hope to see you this evening for Mark and I streaming. We're going to have another go at, um, what's it called? Keep talking and nobody explodes. Um, so yeah, he's got a new computer, which he says will work. <laughs> so fingers crossed. Anyway, 10 p.m. UK time tonight for that. Now let's get to Hinges by Jovial. And what are the rules? They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. Okay, we've got no stipulation that digits can't repeat within cages because actually looking at all these cages, 
they can't repeat within the cages anyway. You can't repeat a digit in those two cells. You can't repeat a digit in those two cells. And everything else, I think, is all in the same box. So such a rule would have been redundant. Um, so, I mean, what does this mean if you're new to Killer Sudoku? Those three digits, you have to add them up and make sure you reach the total of 24. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, I mean, I'm very tempted to start. I mean, it's so generous of Jovial to give me, look, there's two six cages that I instantly know contain the digits one, two, and three, and two 24 cages, which must contain the digits seven, eight, and nine. So we're practically finished. Um, he says, now, what can we do with this? Can I do anything? Uh, oh, no. I was wondering briefly about maths in this box, but I don't think maths is going. I don't think we're going to be able to use the secret just yet. Um, OK, yeah, there's something interesting going on in row. Yeah, OK, it's sort of a New York Times classic Sudoku trick we can do here. Where did the digits one, two and three go in row one? That's quite an interesting question because I definitely can't put two of them in that 19 cage. And I, obviously I can't, put, I can't put any in those cells. There's already one, two and three in the box. I can't put any in a 13 cage. So there are exactly four cells left and I can't put two in this cage because even if I put two and three in, this square would have to be at least 14, which is not going to work. So those two squares are definitely ones, twos, and threes. And there's got to be another one in there, which I'll, I'll label like that, which I appreciate is a bit of a strange way of notating it, but I don't the, oh, the other thing I could think about doing is colouring it, but no, no, actually I don't like the look of that because I don't know what colour these things are. Ah, oh, okay, yes, but the symmetry helps, doesn't it? So I've got... Ah, yes, the symmetry does help. In fact, look at this... Um... Yeah, look at this column. We can do exactly the same, or ask exactly the same question. Where do 1, 2, and 3 go in column 9? Well, not in these three squares, not in a 14 cage. So they have to go in three of these four cells, and you can't put two in the 19 cage again. So we must put, we must put two of them in these squares. One of them must be in the 19 cage, where it, must, it sort of must overlap with the one that we've got contributed from row 1. So... So there must be a one, two, three in the corner um, and not there after all, because if we tried to put one here, then we couldn't put enough one, twos and threes in column nine. That's really clever. That's really clever. Uh, oh, and that. Yeah. OK. And you, ca you can't put a one in a 19 cage because the other two digits would both have to be nine. So this is a two or a three and hopefully it'll be a three and we'll get to do the song. Um, Right, so the, these two digits now are interesting because they have to be, they have to include a 9 and they have to be selected from 7, 8 and 9 because we're either making these two squares add up to 17, in which case they're 8 and 9, or they're adding up to 16, in which case they're 7 and 9. Okay. What does that mean? So that means this digit and this digit have become restricted. Oh, right, I see. I see what you're doing. I see what you're up to, Jovial. Right, that is very beautiful. That is, well, it's, that brings a smile to one's face. Because look, now we, now we turn our attention to these cages instead. And we ask exactly the same question about column one and I presume row nine, because now we can't put seven, eight, nine in the corner cells anymore. So where are we putting seven, eight, nine in this column? Well, I can't put too many of them in a 13 cage. I can put one in a 13 cage. If I try and put two of seven, eight and nine in there, 
then this square would have to be a negative number and that won't work. So I can put one in here. So there's one in here maximum, which means there's two down there maximum. Now let's, let's, let's remember that. Uh, sorry, there's two down here minimum, I should have said. There's one down here, uh, one in those two squares maximum, and two down here minimum. There could be three down here, except there can't be three down here. Because look, we've got exactly the same consideration we've got to juggle with in row nine. Where is seven and eight and nine going in row nine? I can get one into there, but there's at least two in this string of digits. <laughs> so if there's at least two here, and at least two here, how could I ever make that domino? How could I ever put seven, eight, and nine into those two squares? That would mean I could put a maximum of one in those squares, a maximum of one here, and I couldn't put enough seven, eights, and nines into the bottom row. So that means that this square, the junction of column one and row nine, must also be a seven, eight, and a nine. And I think it also means that we have to lend a seven, eight or a nine to the 13 cages in both cases. Because if, yes, if we didn't, we'd have a run of seven, eights and nines here, we'd have the same problem. Because if I do that, I can only put one in those three, and then I can only put one up there and there wouldn't be enough in column one this time. So, so, the, so there, is, there is a seven, eight or a nine in the 13 cage there. Let's just highlight that for a second. And there's a seven, eight or a nine in the 13 cage here. So that's probably gonna push down these digits. Now, can we, um, right, okay. Now let's look at row nine and think about the 12 cage. We've got a seven, eight, nine here. So this little cell here has to be a three, four or a five. And therefore that square is a seven, eight or a nine. And now we have a virtual triple that we've sort of earmarked for the bottom row of the grid where the seven, eights and nines are here, here, and one of them is there. And in this column, we've got the 11 cage, which means that, uh, no, that doesn't quite work the same way actually. So these squares can't be very high digits. Two, three, four, five, or six. two, three, four, five, or six. It's five options for that square, which I refuse to pencil mark. Oh, I see. Yeah, and then this square doesn't have to be high. It could be a five or a six. Oh, that's very annoying. <laughs> so we we don't have symmetry here between the 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 row nine virtual triple and the column one virtual triple in the sense that in row nine, I've got the virtual triple down to four cells. In column one, I've got it down to five cells. I don't know which of these is high. Um, and that's very annoying. But, yeah, I was going to think about the 13 cage, wasn't I? Because I have now know I've got to put a high digit in the 13 cage. Ah, and I've got a 14 cage there as well. That's got to have a high digit in it. Only, yeah, only one though. You can't put two of seven, eight, and nine in the 14 cage. Um, so if this had... Oh, no, no, no. Hang on, there's something going on here. Um, I've got a one, two, three triple in column seven. So those two squares have to be at least four and five. Four and five is nine. So, ah, right. Oh, this is, yeah, this is beautiful. Right. This square is a low digit because even if I absolutely minimize these two squares at four, well, they can't actually be four and five because that would put a four into this square and repeat the four. So this must add up to, this domino must add up to more than nine, which means this square is a maximum of three in order to keep the total down to 13. Now, if that's a one, two, or a three, this square must be the high digit. So that's become the seven, eight, or a nine in the bottom row. 
And now this square, well, actually this, oh, hang on, this, have I broken this? This square can't be a one, two, or three still. So that's at least a four. Oh, no, I haven't quite broken it. That's good. I thought I'd made a mistake there because I thought this was getting too high as a result of having to put quite a hefty number into the into the sort of hinge. Oh, yeah, the hi oh, that's why it's called hinges. Ah. Ah. Sorry, let me just think about that. The hi Yeah, so if that's right, we might have to focus very carefully on the sort of corner cells of these hinges because of the title of the puzzle. Anyway, let's come back to this square. Even if I minimize these two squares, that's eight. So this square is a maximum of five, but a minimum of four. So it is only four or five. And that can't be a nine anymore, because if that's a nine, uh, nine plus four is 13 already, and that would have to be a zero. So three, ten, yeah, so the same thing here. That can't be a max, that's got to be a one or a two. It can't be a three. Um, so now nine is in one of those two cells in the bottom row. And presumably, yeah. Does this work identically? Let us, I see we've got, yeah, we've got the same one, two, three triple in row three that we had in column seven because of the symmetry of the hinges. So these two squares have a minimum value a four and five, which they can't be because that would put a four here. So these have a minimum value of four and six, which is 10, which means that square is low again. This square therefore must be the, the actual yellow digit. And that presumably can't be nine either because that must be at least four, four plus five, yes. So this square is also, it's, it's identical. The logic's identical. So let's, let's fill in those options. So we've got, identical logic here. Ah, yes, okay, so where does the nine go in column one? Well, not in any of the first six cells of the column. So the nine is down here, but we know the nine in row nine is also in this box. So the only cell that meets both of those criteria is that cell, and we get a nine in the corner, which is rather gorgeous. So that square's not a three. Oh, now I'm wondering now about colouring. Oh, that is that is a bit suspicious. The hinges look. This green cell is not the same as this cell, so that must be a yellow cell, and that must means that must be a yellow cell using our old friend Sudoku. <laughs> I don't like to overuse Sudoku in Sudoku puzzles, but sometimes we can we can use it to our advantages, and this is one of those occasions. Now. I've got an arrangement of nines in boxes one and three that's interesting because we should ask where does the nine go in row three of the grid? And it's not those three and it's not those three and it doesn't seem to be able to be those two so it must be here. Which, oh, that gives me the nine here by Sudoku again. Which is interesting. Nine in box nine is oh possibly in the 14 cage oh wow okay this is there's something really clever going on here because now i've got the same logic in columns eight and nine that i just had in rows one one and two because look i've locked the nines into rows eight and nine so we should ask where the nine goes in column seven sorry in columns eight and nine so where does the nine go in column seven not there not there not there so it goes here so now it's there in that in this hinge over here. And now we've got four nines looking into box five. Whenever you have four of a digit looking into a box, you can always place that digit in the box. So it must go in the corner of that, that box as well. And we've got a weird diagonal arrangement of nines going on. Oh, and I can color that square in green now because it's not yellow. Um, now, what does that mean, if anything? That's the question. OK. 
can we do any better than this with the colouring is what I'm wondering. Oh, can I colour those? So I've managed to colour these, but I can't... Oh, the reason I can't colour these two is because I don't know which of these is... I know one of those is green. Yes, in fact, green, look, must be in that domino up there. And this domino here. Um, hang on a minute. Let me, sorry, let me just think about this for a second because there's something going on, I think, either either with greens or with yellows. I'm just trying to see what it is. Um, how do I... How do I know which of these is... Which? Oh, is it the 14 cage? Can we... So if green is... Green is here. Oh no, that's not going to work. Ah, sorry, I'm getting confused. Um, okay. That square. Oh, I know what it is. Yeah, hang on. Where do you put green in row three of the grid? It's not there. And it's not there, so it's there. There we go. So now one of those is yellow. Is that surprising or interesting in any way? The answer's probably not. Um, oh, right. But... Remember the symmetry. So every time I've got something in this puzzle, there's been a weird, you know, symmetry that has able, enabled me to ask the same question about another part of the grid. So once we worked out where green is in row three, I should be asking where yellow is in column seven. And that's an interesting question. Now I know that there's a yellow in one of those squares because yellow isn't there and yellow isn't there and yellow isn't down there so that's yeah oh, this is beautiful good grief so this is yellow which means that's yellow which means that's green um which, now hang on we knew one we know one of those is green and now it's not that one so this is green <laughs> this is mad um Oh, right. I don't. I, maybe I could have done this before, but I've just realised that that eleven that eleven cage is now done, because both sides of it see seven, eight, and nine. Seven, eight, nine there. Seven, eight, nine there. So that's got to be a five, six pair. There's there's some magic going on behind the scenes here. This is just ma it's absolute magic. Seven and eight in box five are a little bit restricted. One, two of those three cells. What have we got? What have we got to complete row three then? So we've got a one, two, three triple. We've got a seven, eight pair and we've got a nine. So these squares have got to be fours, fives and sixes. And I don't think we've... Oh, we have got a couple of pencil marks of fours and fives, but that's it. Um, 14. Oh, the 14 cage hasn't got an 8 in it anymore. So that's a 9-5 cage. And the 9 seems to have... Yes, the 9 has to be in row 8. So that's a 9. That's a 5. That's nothing. That 5 is fixing this square. That's a 4. Those two squares add up to nine. Oh, it must be, come on, are you going to crack now? Maybe. Five, that's seeing that square. That's got to be six. That's got to be five. Six. Oh, where does six go in box nine? I think it can only go here. This square now must be a one, two, or a three to complete the triplicating of the box. Um, six must be in one of those two squares. I'm getting texted. Um, uh, now, right, don't get distracted. This is going quite well. I don't want to get distracted here. That's not a four. Oh, 
Okay, yeah, simple question. Where does 4 go in that box? I think it's got to go here because it doesn't seem to be available for any of those four cells. Um, so 4 in this box now has to be in the top row, which means 4, oh, it doesn't matter. 4 in that box is in a pair, but that's not... Oh, it's a little bit interesting. 4 in the box down here has to be in those cells. One, Well has to be in one of those five cells so we should we can actually argue that the four must be in one of those two cells or state not argue it's a truth there are the four in column one is definitely in one of those two squares um, now what can we do with our newfound inf information can we finish the puzzle with a plum that's our next challenge um, hmm, I'm not sure is the answer. I want to be able to do that, but I'm not immediately seeing how to do that. Can we... Can... I, don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sure that there's something we can do here. He says, trying to buy time as his brain catches up. Um, oh, okay. Oh, it's yeah, right. Okay, this square is a five or a six. Just that's just working on this column and looking at the options. That's got to be a five six pair. I sort of feel like we must be able to res resolve. Oh, is it this 13 cage? I've not looked at that properly. That must have a high digit in it because it's either seven six eight five or four nine. Oh, I see. So, in fact, looking at the positions of greens, these two squares are a 7, 8, 9. Well, the, the, so those three squares there are a 7, 8, 9 triple in the box. So this square must be a 4, 5 or a 6. And that square must be a 1, 2 or a 3. And now I've got a 1, 2, 3 triple in this row. So... This square here can't be a high digit look. If we look at this row, uh, it can't be 7, 8 or 9, but this row needs another 7, 8 or 9, so that must live here. And that must therefore be one of the two. It's a 7 or an 8, but I don't know if we know the colour of it. I know there's yellow in one of those two squares. Actually, maybe this is what I've got to do. Do I have to? to sort of colour dominoes and things like that. I don't know what this is. This square has got to be a 5 or a 6. So I've got a 5-6 pair here. Oh, and whatever colour this is, is going to go there. And then, by the power of magic, it will go there. Well, really, by the power of Sudoku. But it could go there and be still be yellow or green. So there's, some, there's definitely something going on here with the with the, with the yellowings and the greenings in the grid. <laughs> We've just got to somehow work out how to, I think, place more of them. What have we got to do? How do we do that? Do we use the hinges somehow? Ah, yeah, okay, that's an interesting thought. Those are different. So if they're different... I'm wondering if there's some way of... Well, obviously these two digits have to add up to a different number to those two digits. Um, does that mean these have to be different? That's what I'm thinking now. If they were not, if these were the same, let's just have a think about that for a moment. If they were the same, ah, ah, that would be the same as well. So this would be the same. We'd get 
six. Good grief. Right, that doesn't work. This is very, very, this is beautiful again. Right, look at this. If these two digits are the same, where does this orange digit go in box three of the grid? And because of the symmetry and the way it operates through the two six cages, you can see orange would be in that domino, orange would be in this domino. So orange has to, it gets pushed into the top right hand corner. So you have to put orange right in the top right hand corner of the grid where it is the digit two or three because of the 19 cage. But this means that orange has to be two where it, wherever it lives. And that's fine until you realize that that means green is seven now, which means that yellow is eight. But this square can't be low enough to allow that to be true. So you run into a problem here. So actually, I'm not actually certain how useful this will be because it was my my instinct was that these were different digits but that happens now to be true these are different so let's label them up with i don't know let's use some different colors we we'll label this one red and this one blue now <laughs> is that telling us anything that we didn't know already so we know that in this box, green and red add up to... Oh yeah, I know what it's... <laughs> this is so ridiculous. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. It's so obvious once you see it, but it's beautiful. It absolutely has brought tears to my eyes. It's beautiful. Look, these two squares add up to nine using the power of maths on this box. But we know those two digits are different from these two digits. So they must also add up to nine. They just must, because whatever these are, if this was a seven and a two, for example, then we know because these are different from each one in each case. Once this is seven, this has to be eight. Once this is two, that has to be one. So this would be an eight one pair. And if that's an eight one pair, that has to be a seven two pair. So that's got to be a four. That is quite, I mean, it's, it's ludicrous. It's ludicrous cleverness from Jovial. Again, oh, and please come on I must do yes it does I was about to say please it must do something it does allow me to place four down there uh, he pauses as he tries to see what else it must do I can see those squares are now one two three have one two three options it might have been better to color this puzzle according to you know like low digits high digits and medium digits um, I'm not sure what whether that would have been better, but it may have been better. Okay, so we've got the four here. We know that these two are different. We know this adds up to nine. We know this adds up to nine. But is that enough for us to finish the puzzle? Ah, no, I know something I can do that I haven't already done. Look, there's a nine here looking at that cell. So that square is not a nine and that's a nine in the corner. So now this is yellow. For sh that's not yellow. So this is yellow. Now that's yellow. Ah, beautiful. So that's yellow in the middle box. Does that do i've got an awful lot of yeah oh yeah look i can place yellow in box two okay so ah and i worked out that this square had to be a seven or an eight so that's now green which means i can place green in the middle box these two squares now can you lose their corner pencil marks that's now Oh, this is lovely. Right, so this is, oh, I see, the nine here I could have just placed immediately had I seen it. But then that square has got to be the only green in that box. So this becomes a seven or an eight. That's no longer a four. Um, and have I done all, I've done, no, I haven't. I haven't done all my greens. I can place another green here though. So let's do that. And now I think I have placed all the greens and all the yellows in the grid and 
all the nines. Which I'm sure is useful somehow, some way. Ye yes, okay. Well, I, I can see four in box six is in this domino. Which means four in row six is now in exactly that cell. And four in box two is in exactly that cell. Come on. Oh, yes, yes. Now where does four go in box eight? By Sudoku, it's forced into the 12 cage, which means that square, which means yellow is eight. So now we can double click our yellows, fill in those with eights. Double click our greens, fill in those with sevens. That's going to give me this digit now. That's a six. Therefore, that's a five. Ah, that's a six. That's a five. That's a six. That's a six at the bottom of the grid. That's a six by Sudoku. I don't want to speak. No, I'm not saying anything. Ah, now that's 12. So that's got to be a one, which we wouldn't. That's a two, therefore, because we knew these were different. So those squares are now not twos anymore. These squares are not ones anymore. That's not a one. I've I've got 17 in the 19 cage, so that puts 2 in the corner. Ah, and we get a 3 in the corner, and that's 3 in the corner. That's 3 in the spotlight, losing its religion. That's got to be a 1 by Sudoku. That's a 3. This is a 1. This is a 3. I think this is cracking. Um, what do we need in this column? We need a 5 into that cell. That must be a four six pair then. And there's a six here apparently, so we can do this. Six, four, four over here. This column needs a something, a two. That's a two, that's a three. That square up there must be a five. That's a five by Sudoku. This is a two, this is a one three pair. This, oh, this two is doing more work. Two, three, one. Uh, that's a two, it sees, because it sees one and three. So that must be a one. One, two, one, three. Down here we need two. Now we need a three and a something, a five. So five and three go into the grid. The bottom row needs a five. These squares have got to be three and one, I think. One, three, three, six. That looks right. It looks right. Let's click tick. Yay, we did it. We did it. Absolutely mesmerizing. I can understand why people are talking about this in terms of is this the greatest killer Sudoku? Because it's it's completely ridiculous how clever that was. In fact, let's just um if I duplicate the tab and reset the puzzle, let's just have a little think to ourselves quickly about what so the, the sixes were forcing triples in these, in that geometry. The 24s were forcing triples in this geometry. And then after a while, after a while we got nines, didn't we? Because we managed to work out, yes, we couldn't put nines in the 13 cage. So the nines had to live down there and that was a nine. But then the, I think the whole not the whole magic, but the absolute wonder of this puzzle was around these 13 cages and those two cells having to be different. Because somehow, some way, that seemed to work absolute wizardry. And we were able, yeah, I mean, the, the, the PS de resistance for me was working out that this, these colors, I think it was those two cells, let's go back here, these two cells and these two cells had to be totally different totally different from each other and therefore those had to be adding up to nine and these had to be adding up to nine that gave us the four here and from there we could sort of tidy up the puzzle um yeah it's just amazing isn't it absolutely amazing let me know in the comments how you got on um i will read them with interest and i enjoy them especially when they're kind thanks for watching and we will be back tomorrow with another and later tonight uh, with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.